I want people when they're with me to feel like I've listened to them and that they're heard because a lot of people like no one's really going to remember what you say, but everyone's going to remember how they felt being around you. And I don't think it takes that much of attention or energy to allow someone to feel heard or, and therefore like felt feel special. Like, Welcome to the Deeper Than Doe podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, I learned that Hey Yell when I was on Cole and Benji's podcast, and I loved it. So we're bringing it to our (laughs) podcast. (laughs) We have a dinky little show, but it... And my, no, our mics up. aren't colorful. I'm sorry about that. I know. Wait, your guys are colorful? No, yeah. yeah. Headphones were colorful. I think yeah. I, had, I had a bright green <laughs> mic with, with pink, pink headphones. headphones. When, you, so when you have a $1,000 budget, you can stretch it pretty far. Yes. We bought all our equipment <laughs> off of Facebook Marketplace, and a lot of it was from people who found it. Found, we found this, and it's like yep. five hundred. <laughs> that's that's kind of how we base everything off of because literally we like all of our cameras, everything Facebook Marketplace, and I would always be the one to be like Benji, what are you doing tonight? And he was just like, oh my gosh, like what is it again? Because you can tell, like, because we're like we're best friends, mm-hmm. so you can tell when like we want to like hang out and do something, and then like when there's an actual task at hand. Yeah. And at this point, it was eight thirty at night. It was raining outside. And I'm like, Benji, there's a camera, 50 bucks. Let's go get it. And he's like, he's like, and he, and Benji's like, where, where's it from? And he's, I think he was holding his breath being like, gosh, dang it. Don't, don't, say Tequila, don't say Salt Lake. But what did I say? He's, I think he said Kearns. No, <laughs> West Valley. Well, yeah. at 830 okay. in the rain, dude, I would not go there. Yeah, that, that's when you bring it to Or well, you pray. pray. I don't know. So we did both because so pick him up. We were going down. It's dark. It's rainy. By the time we get there, it's probably like nine o'clock, nine thirty, because it took a little bit, you know, just like mm-hmm. get get us going there. And I was just like, it was really sketchy. So the roads crappy. They haven't been fixed in years. And it's like get, 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 get. construction everywhere. The construction's been there for years too. And we were just talking back and forth. We're like, you stay in the car. I'll go out. We were meeting in like this public place and like as long as there's not that blinking blue light you know like those 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 the things that police yeah places. places as long as there's no blinking blue light we're good we pull into the parking lot homeless people shirtless everywhere <laughs> scratching themselves we're like oh no and right in the middle of the parking lot guess what's there the camera <laughs> the the camera bright blinking blue light and we're like oh no anyways this this dinky red beat up 2000 something toyota corolla pulls up and we're like oh gosh Someone in it, probably an awesome person. We hand we hand the fifty bucks. Well, I think the problem was is that we had just watched Mad Max, and there's that scene oh, where it's like, yeah. oh, that, like that's a distraction. Once we get out, I know. they're gonna come out on all sides. I know. So we're <laughs> we're we're jacked up right now, and so we we get the money, whatever. We get the train, we get the camera. You know, it's just like this this dinky cannon, whatever. But then we made the mistake because I was like, we were trying to pull up the map and get out of this place as, as fast as we can. But the only way there's like one way streets. So we accidentally follow the person who who gave but us 45 the, seconds. 45 seconds. You didn't have an exit out, strategy and, here? No, well, we were trying, but this girl that had given us the camera that we paid the camera for, she went into full survival mode because we had followed her for probably like 45 seconds. Oh gosh. And she peels out in front of the person in front of her just to try to get away from us. Cause I she think ran a red light. She ran a red light <laughs> and we're like, and just us two, like just dressed up as like, yeah, it was crazy. Anywho, that's what we do on the shed show. We, we try to, we try to get Did everything any, on the uh, past videos on the, that camera. <laughs> We don't talk, yeah, about, we can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's so many. Like the other time where we bought, what was that 500 piece, $500 piece of equipment that we got for like 120 bucks? Yeah. Yeah. My stuff got stolen last time I went to Vegas. They stole a bunch of laptops and AirPods. And you guys are probably buying that. <laughs> when when <laughs> found, we found this Dirty logo on one of the computers, like, dude, how do they know? <laughs> Anyways, what are, <laughs> what's the background? Um, what's your guys' background? Best friends yeah. forever. Best well, friends forever. Well, yeah, we first met when we played baseball. Mm-hmm. We were eleven, turning twelve. We all thought that he sucked at baseball. He just needed glasses. Couldn't see a thing. I was hey, lying because I didn't want to be hurt. That. There we go. We were South Shore, like South Valley baseball, okay. which is like 
you know, like please play baseball with us and stay off the streets type of baseball. <laughs> so, you couldn't, you couldn't get onto like the school, like JV team kind of baseball and your parents yeah. had to pay for you being so horrible at sports. Yeah. That's, so, that, like, that's where we landed. Yep. Uh, paying you to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was on the Mets, on the Astros. Did you guys mm, get like, yeah, team? the Phillies baby. The Phillies. All right. Yeah. So Cole's team was number two in the league. I was last, but I was like, I don't know how they split it up. Cause I was the only good player on the team. So it was basically my, me versus their team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I was the bench warmer. I, I probably I You're was I was team. I was on the winning team. And that's what started our friendship because we we went to the same middle school. We walked in same science class. And I was like, hey. And he's like, oh, gosh, hey, how are you? Yeah, it's like, that's the loser. <laughs> the loser from the winning team. <laughs> yeah, that's the winner from the losing team. <laughs> and we've been together. Oh, so exciting. <laughs> and then right now you guys are in ads, marketing. Yeah. So uh, base. Like them, I've been in the marketing world for, well, my journey is interesting because I came back from my mission from, for my church and I didn't want to like drop 10 K trying to go to school and figure out what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go get hands-on experience. So I feel like most people, when they try and go and get hands-on experience, they just end up in sales. So I was in sales for like three years and I was never like top three, top five good, but I was always like top 10 good. So, and I think it's just because I'm um, just good looking, who knows, but, <laughs> but I was working for this SaaS company and their VP of sales, like he was really cool, but not like, I don't know how to put it. Like he just didn't have the marketing added to the marketing brain. So we had all these webinars and we had a list of all these Cause this was, we were selling sat like software to lawyers. So we had all these emails of all these lawyers and there was no like follow-up sequence. I'm like, Hey, you came to this webinar. Hey, you didn't come to this webinar. So I dove in for like three months learning email marketing copy. I got all these certificates from HubSpot and I wrote this six email sequence that just sent it out to all these webinar attendees. And for this space, we, they wanted us to do about a hundred to 120 calls a day. That's not really bad for sales. But that would get you like five good conversations, which would lead you to like two appointments a day. Well, I sent that out. And in the first week, I went from my like five good calls a day to like 15 good calls a day because of the emails. It just filtered out these yeah. people. And I was like, oh, I'm really good at this. And I started to keep on going and going. And it hit, got to a point where I'd hit quota within the first two weeks just through emails. And then I would just like breeze on You're like, what? I'm not telling anybody <laughs> about this secret. Obviously they're like, wow, your call time is like 10 minutes a day. And I'm like, Hey, scoreboard, baby. Don't, no, 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 don't knock it. it. <laughs> Have you used what you said? Six email drip campaigns. Yeah. I use chat GPT and I put <laughs> right six email drip campaigns selling dirty little franchises speaking about X, Y, Z and it freaking did it, dude. Yeah. It was, it was sweet. Chat GB, uh, chat GPT. Not take away from you. No, no. So uh, everything you did be was scared. garbage. <laughs> 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 no. What year was this, by the way? Cause that's this, pretty, this is like before people yeah, started. 2021. Wow. Okay. And so yeah, I was before that, but yeah, like right now I'm learning everything chat GPT because yeah, if you don't that so hard, please yeah. tell me you also hired a, an assistant in the Philippines to just do everything for you. And and I, you just wanted showed to. Up. I really, really wanted to, I was getting married at the time. So my cash reserves were a little drained. <laughs> All you need is like $10 and that's like <laughs> <laughs> ten, 10 bucks a week or something. 10 bucks a week. It's like a thousand. But no, if I started doing that, like I would, I tried to like switch to like, if you guys ever read four hour work week, like that's yeah, my bread man bread. in India. That's yeah. His website. I did that in college. I hired people to write my papers. See, that's how you do it though. <laughs> and then I dropped out. <laughs> so I didn't fool anybody. But I gotta be. Your professor's like, yeah, <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> but it works. I think week. I love that book. Everything Tim Ferriss it does and is. But like after I w was there, I was like, okay, I could take this and elevate. I went to an ad agency and I was the social media coordinator, which like they just kind of gave me a lower um, title and then expected everything. I think that's basically anywhere. But mm -hmm. I was working for the group of like real estate agents, lawyers, all this stuff, and I would 
create the social media marketing strategy where it's like, okay. And I think everyone knows this in their brain, but it's just like having it said is different, but saying like, okay, I'm going to scroll TikTok for an hour like everyone does. And then I'm going to be like, okay, these 10 TikToks got over 50,000 likes within my industry. How can we recreate it in our niche? Mm -hmm. And then I would take that and then I'd go to our producers who technically was Cole. (laughs) <laughs> we work together at this agency and I would be like, Hey Cole, we need to make these 10 TikTok videos. And then we would make them. And the first video I did that for, it got 10,000 views in two hours. Yeah. And it's, so you loved him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like this guy. Yep. And so that's just kind of how my brain works. I call it structured laziness or strategized laziness where I'm like, okay, it's coined. It's coined. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, he's got it. It's copyright. Just kidding. But just spend, I think if you just spend an hour thinking about something pretty intensely and thinking, well, if I just, what can I do to make this better or apply it to me or whatever? It's the 2080 principle, minimum dose effect from Tim Ferriss. I think it's a lot harder to like actually apply it than just like theorize it. Like, yeah. We all go to like those weird uh, business things where a guy gets up and really hyped out. He's like, this is what you got to do. And then we all leave. We're like, I totally forgot about it. <laughs> um, you shouldn't forget about that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the same way. You go and you pay all these monies for these events yeah. and then you're like, yeah. And then you forget most of it. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what up? You meet some good people though. Yeah. Um, Cole, what about you? When, when, how did you get into the, the marketing world? Yeah. Um, well, my true love comes back down to video production. So that's kind of where I got my roots. I was kind of, I was like a video production assistant or manager, depending on what that startup wanted to call me that day. I did a lot of uh, assistant camera work. So that's where I kind of found my love for not only podcasting, but for commercials, all these other really awesome things. Uh, that's why I just nerd out whenever I come to a new podcast studio and I'm like, Oh man, what are you using? I use the very minimal thing. And so it's just really fun. Um, but yeah, that's where it kind of really sparked my love of, of kind of marketing. Cause where the world is going now, if you don't have really good video content, you're going to get left behind. Yeah. It's not, you can't just, agree. you can't get your, your name in, in really the phone book anymore. You can't go AA dirty dough or AA all these things. You can't, like, to get at the very top, you gotta be, you gotta kind of take deep dives and you gotta really research the stuff where that's where Benji's strength really, really comes in. And that's why I think we've been friends for so long, just because we, our strengths complement each other. And that's why a lot of the time, whenever we go to new businesses or go to new jobs, one of us is either following the other person from place to place. Uh, but yeah, I got my start in there, then kind of moved on to another production company and then to where we both worked, where I was able to take a step, not back, but sideways. So stepped away from more of the production side of things and then went more with the pre-production. So really getting influ we call them influencers, getting people in, um, kind of figuring out their brand, their marketing, all that jazz. And of course I didn't do all that. We had an amazing team, but just kind of orchestrating all that jazz. Uh, and then that's just kind of been the building blocks ever since, uh, was just kind of getting more experience in making trainings for companies and, and, and just really figuring out how to optimize growing companies so that they, they don't have to continue to kind of do things the most traditional way. Yeah. So that's kind of where I found kind of my love and experience for kind of this field that we're both pretty much in. So you guys, talk a lot. (laughs) You're super fun. I mean, after I was on your guys' podcast, that kind of shaped the way and how I wanted to do this one. Mm -hmm. A lot more free flowing, more relaxed before it was you, you assholes. (laughs) (laughs) We're at it. And they're like, we've heard you be in, you know, as a guest on other, like, loosen up a little bit. That's what they told me. (laughs) This is, yeah, they they told me that that was, that was, you're like, you're way too professional. I don't know what you told me, but I'm like, I am. I don't like that. Like, that's not me. Um, So when we started with this, Mm -hmm. anyways, I formulated a lot of how I wanted this to run based off of the shit show. I'm yeah. <laughs> dead show. You guys going to need to check if, out the if podcast. anything, yes. Yeah. But they do give you a shirt with a little hoop emoji. A little turd with a door on it. That's the, yep. Anyways, but it's such a fun podcast. So talking joy and fulfillment, what brings you guys joy and fulfillment? And you guys are just so positive and upbeat and go-getters. I think one thing for me 
I think it does come to like my structured laziness, like figuring out like, okay, uh, let me take you for example. I don't want to be be rude, but you brought it up. So when I was going to <laughs> the doors, been open. all right, all right. I went through all your content before you came on the show, and I was like, "This is so boring." But <laughs> no, like, but the thing is, is that you had a lot of gold that just I think the common day viewer doesn't want to mine too. Uh, One of the things is, is like your business prowess is so high that I don't think people understand it in the sense, like how dirty dough is set up is completely different from any other franchise that at least I've seen in the cookie industry, which is cutthroat apparently, (laughs) but it was so interesting and like seeing your personality behind it. I think that was what made you first of all, successful in business, but it makes you such an interesting person to be around, Mm -hmm. but it's sometimes getting there. And I think a lot of people, they'll think like, oh, Joe Rogan, biggest podcast. But how many people listen to like his three, like actually three hour podcast instead of like the five hour snippets he sent, like does like the week later. Yeah. Yep. That, that, that's what I do at least. I, I don't know everyone else, but so with my structured laziness, I always think like, well, how is this the most easily consumed in the sense of like, um, like what's the best workouts to get the biggest return? What is the best way to watch this movie um cole and i this is so dumb but whenever we watch horror movies a lot of horror movies there's just a lot of build up to nothing so we'll watch it like 1.5 speed to like get to the good part <laughs> have you guys ever watched <laughs> annabelle i've done that on all youtube videos i've never actually had somebody do a movie though that's yeah. the new one watch yeah. annabelle series at 1.5 speed and it turns into like a mystery documentary instead of like a horror movie and you're like <laughs> this demon sucks at killing people <laughs> <laughs> but i think there's just a lot of things that if you approach it saying like okay we've been doing this this way for 15 years. And I think chat GPT is a, a great way to say like, okay, the search engine used to be this where it's like, um, examples of my biology paper. Now chat GPT is, um, what are five points of this biology thing? And then they bring it up, like write me an essay about those five things. Yeah. And I think a lot of companies are going to be left behind because their approach is, well, you know, I learned this either in college or I learned this from my, And I don't want to like, I feel like a lot of mentors are good, but sometimes you have to question the source in a sense where it's like, well, they, they earned their salt 30 years ago. Like, like, amen to that. Well, and like, there's some real estate gurus out there that made their millions of dollars in like 2006 when it was like pretty easy to make a million. If anyone's seen big short, great movie, (laughs) But, but I think you just have to approach it in a different way. Um, to quote Mark Twain, where it's like, if you're on the side of the majority, you need to start asking more questions. Like, are you actually where you need to be? So are you saying kind of fighting, swimming upstream? Mm -hmm. That's what gives you the joy and fulfillment. Like I'm doing things differently. Yeah. Is it the fact that it's different or is it the fact that you feel like it's more effective and that gives you fulfillment? I think it's both in a sense that I, I feel different and I don't like being the center of the attention. But I also that true, Cole. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, no, I'm in there. but I'm calling. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be like the the cool guy in the corner that right. it's like the uncle at every family function where you're like, don't talk to Uncle Ben. Dude. He's gonna talk <laughs> your ear off, man. <laughs> but also like being most effective. I like being lazy. I like like I like watching Annabelle at t- twice speed or something, and I would rather spend my free time doing stuff like that. And so like in that beginning story where I put in three months to figure out email marketing Mm -hmm. to then get to quota at two weeks, like I did two hard weeks and then took two weeks off. Like I used my PTO. I did not care. Yeah. So kind of recapping that. So you pretty much just find fulfillment in automating and putting all the hard work in first and kind of seeing where all of those, those hard. I should have asked you the question. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Let me, let me define it. (laughs) Uh, yeah, he's got it. Question no to you. Uh, I think mine's a little bit more simple. Where I really find fulfillment in what That's we me. do. <laughs> no, this is for this is for this is for all the other audience members that aren't as analytical and smart. This is just more of the simple man uh, approach to things. But where I find fulfillment is is making connections with everybody in my network because I feel like that is one of the things in life that 
that is going to pay more dividends than anything else is going to be the people, you know, yep. and that 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 makes me happy when I can make uh, when I can when I can say, hey, what are you what are you interested in? And someone's like, oh, this, this, and that I love to be able to say. I have a friend who does blank, blank and blank. And it just brings me a lot of, a lot of joy to kind of be that, that middleman and helping people kind of achieve their goals. And I think that's a big part of what the shed show is all about. It's bringing a lot of different people from different places and kind of, kind of not simplifying them down, but bringing them more down to earth. So you can be like, I could do that someday. Or like, we just barely had a really fun, uh, uh, three f- cool dudes um, in a band called Mopsy. I don't know if you guys saw that episode, but no, it really no one did. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there, but it was it was it was just really Thank cool you to those sixty seven viewers. Yes, um, it was just really cool talking to them and kind of kind of getting the mindset of of someone who who has the dream of becoming a rock star someday and kind of boiling it down to what are the daily things that create that habit to to get you to from point A to point B, from getting you from that garage band to a, a stage in Salt Lake to your next bigger event. And I feel like that's what it's the joy that I see in helping my friends get to those places. And I think that's where I really find a lot of the fulfillment in my life. And I always, I always joke around with my wife because I feel like we're all, especially when you're kind of more in the entrepreneurial world, it's just like, I have all these great ideas and all these things, but does it make money? And so what I always joke around with her is just like, (laughs) yeah, make money. (laughs) So that's why you have Mike's like jump the club, the club, club man. <laughs> well, and I always just, I, I always, I always talk to her and it's like one of these days, like I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep trying to push my network up. I'm going to keep trying to create opportunities for those people around me. And one of these days, someone's going to really either hit it big or someone's going to do something super awesome. And they'll be like, Hey, thanks Cole. And then they'll bring me on the podcast. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like Bennett did. So did you describe the, like the greatest showman plot or. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so both of you guys are married. Mm-hmm. Neither of you have kids yet, right? No. Okay. Yeah. Ho- hopefully not. I, I <laughs> <laughs> None that you know of. <laughs> um, kind of switching maybe to work-life balance mm-hmm. and how is that going for you guys? And is there any struggles maybe on the mental health side that you guys have experienced, whether it's work-life balance or just the work or just, just the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's all hard. I, I think probably the biggest one kind of going off that last thought is just being married. No, oh, okay. being married is amazing, <laughs> but sharing those, because when you're single, you have all these dreams and you have pretty much unlimited time and you yeah. can just, you can, if you want to get into a subject or if you want to try this certain thing, like you're like, if I'm going to get into real estate videography, I'm going to take a deep dive in YouTube and I'm never going to come out until so you're an expert until, yeah, until <laughs> something else. But when you, when you bring someone else into your life, you kind of, you, you're less of kind of your own CEO. And now you share this business, which is this family unit. And sometimes it's, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to share those big dreams because when, when you, when you join together, it's, it's more like, okay, what's important to you? What's important to me? We have all these new responsibilities. We have all these things that we need to cover. I think the biggest struggle is just being like, do I keep my dreams alive? Do I keep going after those things that I want to, to accomplish in life? Or do I play it safe and go down some other avenues, which people have found a lot of great success in, but I don't want to say you're selling out, but it's just kind of that fear of now that I have this new family unit, like where's the balance there? So I feel like that's something that I really struggle with, with being like, I really want to focus everything on a dream and aspiration, whatever, but can we, can the we reality talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Cause I, this weekend, my wife challenged me. She asked there was something that I said, I don't like to be told no to. And she's like, well, guess what? You're married now. I'm like, oh, it's because a business like you, that you have to get over the nose. Yeah. And so like, how have you found setting up an environment where you can both succeed in the dreams and aspirations? Like, I, I haven't found that secret yet. I'm waiting for it to fall in my lap, but <laughs> I think well, we're all here you for go. That. No, no, I don't, have any, I don't have any super deep gold, but I think really what it comes down to is having being just as supportive of your spouse's dreams as they are of yours, because 
you have to find that middle ground. And if one isn't willing to budge on the other, then you're just, it's kind of like you have a failing business. If you have a business partner that they're like, I'm not going to fulfill on my end, or I'm not going to help you out with the process, then it's just kind of, it kind of just crumbles from there. So it really comes down to the HR in your life with those personal relationships. You really got to cater. I feel like those relationships and be like, Hey, I'm going to schedule out this time. Um, this is date night. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go to your parents this weekend, because if you always book up your schedule, if you take your whatever schedule you're with your spouse or family member, if you take your five to nine o'clock at night and you keep you don't, you don't communicate like what allotments go to them, yeah. then your business is going to fail because you're not being a very good co-CEO. Hmm. My six-year-old is now noticing the importance of a calendar. <laughs> so oh. if she asked me to do something, it has to go on the calendar now. And she watches me put it because she knows that I, I go do my calendar. So mm -hmm. here's my calendar for today. Tomorrow, Mia and Bennett only pizza pie cafe. <laughs> I go, I tell her last week and I go, do you want to go to her, like a romantic dinner? And she goes, yeah, let's do pizza pie cafe. I was like, okay. <laughs> she doesn't know what romantic means. Yeah. No, I said fancy. I didn't say romantic. Um, but I want to take her to a nice dinner. Uh -huh. She's like, I just want to go with just, cause usually I take, we do daddy daughter dates pretty much every day, but it's both of the daughters. Uh -huh. So sometimes they want just one. Anyways, pizza pie cafe. And she goes, put it in the calendar. I go, okay, I'll put it, I'll put it right now. <laughs> so it's in there. It's Has in she ever sent you a calendar invite? She just, <laughs> she just got a, a watch phone, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is six. We got it. So because it has geofencing. So she always runs to the neighbor and I'm very big on the, I guess, anti uh, helicopter parenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like let them take risks. Mm -hmm. But we need, you know, make sure it's. Yeah, there's safe. a. Stock. You want that spy balloon up, though. You you know what you want. You want to make this, uh, you want to make sure that it's not secret. <laughs> Jackson's house, or over to the park, or anyways, and then you set up geofencing. She leaves. Well, she calls me every freaking day, mm -hmm. like fifteen times a day. But no, it's 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 fun. Mm -hmm. It's super fun. Benji, what about you and and the uh, any struggles on the mental health well, aspect, whether it's personal, business, spouse. So, my wife and I are really good about this, but it's taken a lot of work and it's just negotiating with each other. And since like, so in the beginning of our marriage, like I was very used to doing 80, 90 hours of week of like work or working on a skill or a business. And I'm, I would say that I'm not naturally good at a lot of things, but I'm naturally good at figuring out how to do them. So learning is just my superpower. And when we first got married, that was an adjustment saying like, okay, well, how much time do we want to spend together? And I think once you, like, you have to have these negotiations where it's like, well, do like, it's somewhere in between one hour and 24 hours a day. So it's not 24 hours. So how much is it? Like, well, it's not one hour either. And just breaking it down. Cause I think the more specific you get, the more you establish your expectations. Cause I feel like a lot of people live in the world of unspoken expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where people get in trouble where like you just have to take extreme accountability saying like, I thought that this was going to happen, but I didn't say that to you. And that's my fault. And so that's one thing that we've gotten really good at, but it's, it's weird to say like, Hey, I'm going to go negotiate with my wife real quick. Like we, I mean, I, I'm a big proponent of your happiness is your expectations versus reality. Mm -hmm. So you can spend three hours with your wife a day, but, and, and you were only expecting to do two hours. So you're like, I'm over giving. Yeah. She's expecting four hours and she's like this a-hole. <laughs> Even though you guys are either way, like you guys both think that the other person thinks the opposite. Right. Yeah. Um, and those crucial conversations with the spouse are, are super, super key. Yeah. And Another quote from Tim Ferriss. I guess I'm just shouting him out today. It's probably because I listened to his podcast today, but your life can only like, basically your life equals how many hard conversations you could have. So if you are having some problems in a sense, like, well, I wish this would happen. I wish this was happening. I wish this would happen, but I'm a little too afraid to say anything about it. And this could either be with your boss or your best friend, then like, that's your fault. Like yeah. you didn't say anything. And like, obviously you can only control yourself. 
you can't like, there's no like super secret power to like brainwash your wife into like doing what you want. But <laughs> There is a super secret power though, to get her open. <laughs> yeah. We talked about it on your podcast, but after we stopped recording. <laughs> wait, wait, I didn't hear about that. It's like, like what? We started talking about magic mushrooms. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, your spouse talking about setting expectations and just being open, raw, and vulnerable. Yeah. I've never, I've never had those sort of connections uh, with my wife, like I have on psychedelics. Well, I don't know if you've ever listened to Dr. Andrew Huberman on, about psychedelics. All the time. Yeah, I, I love how he talks about basically that it does just open your mind. Mm -hmm. It does create. Well, it depends. Was this yeah. two months ago? Because we, <laughs> two months ago, he told everybody, I've only done MDMA on clinical trial. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, about two months ago, he was like, okay, okay, I've done mushrooms. I've done these other ones. I just yeah. don't want to say it. <laughs> Well, we all knew what he was saying at the time. We're like, he has way too much experience to be talking to this. There's deeper insights here. Yeah. There's a podcast that he, he, he did with uh, Sam Harris. Mm -hmm. Four hours long. Probably the best podcast I've ever listened to. And not just psychedelics, but consciousness in general. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people when it comes to like your mental health, they're not very intentional. Mm -hmm. um, I think they just hear a lot of things on TikTok and they can just say words like, well, they're, you're gaslighting me or you're manipulating me or like, but I just, I've never heard a lot of people other than like David Goggins or, or Jocko say like, well, you need to take accountability for some stuff. Yep. Uh, I've had some relationships that have not gone the way that I wanted to and doing research on it. A lot of it is because I didn't, say what I wanted. And like, I would just come up with things where like, for example, like I would just say what would be a good excuse. Like, Hey, we're, I want to break up with you because your dad does this and I don't like that. But in reality, it's like, you suck so bad. I don't want to, like, <laughs> you, and, you try to find the excuse rather yeah. than just tell yeah. them. And I think that could have been like, obviously I, like I was meant to be with my wife, but I feel like it would have been better for them and for me if I was honest about it. Mm -hmm. And there could have been further growth. Or maybe even not dishonest. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah, it, it's, I think the honesty is the best way. Yeah. But also not blaming it on something. Just you, sometimes you don't need an, yeah. a reason. You're just like, it's just, just not. A, I think that's a little bit better than making up. I yeah. it was every time I broke with someone, I'd make up an excuse to, yeah. to try to like make it feel like it's not me, the bad guy, make yeah. it feel good. But I think overall it just hurts everybody more. <laughs> well, but I feel Just bad. Like it's tricking games. Well, I remember I broke up with a girl and I kind of used word for word what George said in Seinfeld once where I was like, oh, it's not you. It's me. Like, I want you to be happy. And this is what will make you happy. <laughs> and afterwards, I was like, oh, that worked really well. But that, like, that is not like that didn't help anyone grow in that circumstance. Yep. But when I also think it comes to mental health, I think a lot of people just need to take accountability. Like, what are you doing with your body? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Warren Buffett has like this passage that he said, where he's like, if I gave you, like, if I could buy you a car, what car would you buy? And he's like, okay, now I tell you that that car is going to be your only car for the rest of your life. How are you going to take care of that car? It's like the same with your body. Not everyone's treating their body like how they would treat that car. Mm -hmm. And like how you treat your body is like how your mind's going to react. So if you're eating McDonald's every day, <laughs> Sorry, he. I run like a Ferrari. Uh, <laughs> Dalton, 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 our producer. All right. Yeah, no, he eats McDonald's all the time. Not anymore. He has a budget, but. <laughs> <laughs> but our menu. You like your brain's not going to feel good. Yeah. Um. I mean, what are those things? I guess the actual items that you do, and you're like, okay, I'm yeah. gonna, I need to treat my body correctly because. My mind is my body. Yeah. If you just look like um, up omega-3 oil, like if you just do Google omega-3 oil depression, the first like snippet on the search engine pains that, that's going to come up, it's basically like you will have the same effects as taking that once a day as taking antidepressants. Like, mm -hmm. like that's just, I just talked about this yeah. this morning <laughs> with my wife. I was like, are you taking your freaking fish oils? Exactly. Are you pulling up? Cause you told you me she's just filling. I want to say, I'm curious. Oh no, it's huge. Omega three. Oh, I know that. Is, I, I just this morning because of mm -hmm. that. And she's like, Oh, I don't, you know, I haven't been feeling great. And I was like, well, have you been mm -hmm. doing X, Y, Z? And we went to like, okay, have you been taking your supplement stack? And yeah. I got a bajillion supplements and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go portion out the next month. And it was omega threes, mm -hmm. some new nootropics and some other things, but yeah, that's uh, such a big thing. Another thing that I do, like, 
again, I live my lifestyle in a different way when it comes to physicality. There's this um, bodybuilder called Mike Menser. If you look him up, his whole, th- he won the, I think, 19... 19- 87 uh mr olympia and he only worked out once every four days Mm -hmm. and um i forgot what article like occam's protocol yeah is that from the the tim ferris four hour body so that's i've done that it works yeah so i've been doing that i just gained 10 pounds of muscle these past 32 days but i only work out four hours Dude. pounds of muscle yeah uh, he's his buttons are popping on his shirt all right continue sorry is it, sorry comes protocols yeah, exactly it? but i uh, will explain what it is so basically um in tim ferris four hour work week you there's a b workouts a workout is for our body oh I yeah for our, our body sorry same thing so you're going to approach it where basically you're only going to be doing two exercises to failure. And then Tim Ferriss has his own thing where he's like, well, this is what I did. And it was 10 exercises tell failure. And it's tell failure. You, yeah. you don't know what failure is until you do this because it's the K is it six and six. Yeah. Or is it five and five? It's five and five by right. five and five. So five down, don't pause at the bottom, go straight to going back up. Mm-hmm. And then you don't pause at the top and you go, and then the the two failure is you push as hard as you can without moving the weight and you hold it for 10 to 15 seconds mm-hmm. and then you're done. So you have to do it like bench press. You have to do it with a spotter and it is so much harder than you think. Yeah. So much. I just actually did it on Saturday with, with bench press and I was repping out. I could rep out two plates like over 20 times. Yeah. I put on a plate and a 10 and I maybe did it like seven times. Yeah. This is so much freaking harder. Well, and that time under tension, that's the important stuff, right? That's what it is. To and, really tear your muscles. And so basically the whole thesis of it is that time under tension, it's going to tear up your muscles so much and that your muscle germline has to have time to heal. And it, it takes, depending on which doctor you talk to, it could take from four to 10 days for that muscle germline to heal. So you'll do workout a, let's say it's bench press. You're going to wait four days. You're going to do workout B and that's going to, let's say it's squat. And then by the time you get back to workout a, which is going to be two to four days later, depending on. So it's been almost eight to 12 days since your last workout, you're completely recovered. Your muscles are going to basically for me, I have, on my phone, basically the, the workout journal, I've taken my bench up 25 pounds doing that. I, I, when I did it, I monitored every, and every mm -hmm. time it's just, okay, next, next workout, I will put on five or 10 pounds Yeah, and then your body can do it. It's crazy. And your own, I mean, how long are your workouts? My workouts range from 28 minutes to 37 minutes. It's pretty the accuracy. Yeah. <laughs> I, when I was doing them, I was under, always under 30 minutes. Cause you really? can choose maybe, I don't know, maybe I was choosing four workouts, mm-hmm. but just one set, to complete failure and that's it. And yeah, no, that the muscle growth is huge. It, and then, so I'll do that once every four days. And then every day I'll go to the sauna for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And mostly it's cause I'm trying to get that heat shock protein to re- make my muscles recover. Um, Andrew Huberman has another podcast about um, sauna stuff. And he talks about once every seven to 10 days doing a two hour session in the sauna. Oh, I've heard that. No. And Basically, it's 30 minutes in, five minutes off, 30 minutes in, five minutes off. And what it does is that it 16 folds your testosterone. Like Whoa. you have to do it only once every seven to 10 days. If you do it more than that, then your body has an adaptation and then it doesn't have as big an effect. But I'll do that. Every- Are you doing at the gym? Yeah, just at Vasa. I wish it got hotter in Vasa. I agree. But I just bought a home sauna just well, so I can screw it. you. But <laughs> well, I'm going to do that. Come over. Come over. Yeah. We can sauna together, man. But not only, <laughs> like that 30 minutes, five minutes, 30 minutes, you will see God. Like <laughs> you, like if you go in with a question for Jesus, you're going to walk out with it <laughs> <laughs> or not walk out, <laughs> not walk out at all. Cool. Oh, it, I, what is it? What do you want it at? Like 180, 190 degrees. So he says in between one, um, I think he does 80 and a hundred celsius is he's a he's a scientist he is celsius <laughs> but uh that comes out to like 172 to like just below 200 or 200 well 100 is 212 yeah that's freaking hot i yeah i, I paid for the upgraded heater i was like how hot will this get me they're like well they're not supposed to they're supposed to automatically cut off at 200 you're not supposed to mm-hmm. 
maybe he was just selling me that, but that's what he told me. He said anything above that, the the guidelines won't let them. I don't know. <laughs> like this is like this is America. I'll do what I want. Thank you. <laughs> Turn that off before you. But, All right, Mike. Ask me a question that's not about working out. I can hear your <laughs> listeners. You just clicked off of this video, dude. I got you ten minutes. You got your ten minutes, Mike. Ask us anything else. Well, <laughs> how do you want to be remembered in this lifetime? Dang. That's deep. Do you want to pass that? Or? No, 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 no. I want to go to the gym. I want to die in the sauna. That's how I want to be remembered. The sauna guy. That actually brings up a funny. No, I'm not even take. There's a dead guy in a sauna and Benji found him. Um, how do I want to be remembered? Literally, I think it comes right back down to just how many people we were able to, you know, help out. Because I feel like your your good deeds are going to live longer than any any one structure, whether that be a physical, whether it be like a business, the relationships that you make and the people that you help make successful, your good deeds are going to live through them and through all of their projects. So I feel like, I don't know. I feel like that's my simple take on. So it's, like it, it's having the greatest impact on the most amount of people. Yeah. Or just, or just, I don't know. You put that pretty well. Mm. You put that pretty well. He reads a lot of self-help books. You could, tell. I know. And I don't, I know that's, that's what balances us out. He has all these facts and I just have all these like, Oh man, like we just want to help the theology of it. Just want to help people. But yeah. Well, the, the more you can get clear on it, mm. the more you can execute on it mm -hmm. and to defend not only Benji, but myself, <laughs> when I, was right, I mean, that talking, like getting your mind right and your body right to be able to impact the greatest amount of lives possible. I, I mean, I, th I think they do go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So don't, hopefully not everybody tuned out, go get in the sauna. Go get in you, the sauna I mean, you have to feel good. You have to have your mind right if you're going to help other people. Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer of that. I agree. No, I well, get a McFlurry and I'm happy, but I'm probably going to die way before. <laughs> is, is there any anything that you do proact like to make sure that I'm the sharpest, to make sure I'm happy, to make sure I'm in a good mood? What do you do on a daily or weekly basis? Is there any routines? Make sure the chores are done. Make sure I block a lot of YouTube shorts. I, I used to live with his family uh -huh. and they, he's the one who would always go over on the data because he was watching YouTube shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel like it's more of just catering the relationships in my life. That uh, probably, I mean, I probably should walk more. Go yeah. Walk the dog more. Yeah. I'll walk the dog more, well, but I think that's where it's balanced. You, you got to compare more. that. I mean, pair it with something else. Like, or at least, at least that's how we think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You well, I'm going to do a, a podcast at two X speed while I'm walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you're when you're like, okay, now I get to, I get to go on the walk and I get to listen mm -hmm. to the podcast. Mm -hmm. Then, anyways, um, we do need to wrap up here. Benji, last question: mm -hmm. How do you want to be remembered? What's how do you want people to talk about you? I think so. I this comes from another book that I read but with Chris Voss, but I think a lot of it is I want people when they're with me to feel like I've listened to them and that they're heard because a lot of people like no one's really going to remember what you say, but everyone's going to remember how they felt being around you. I agree. And I don't think it takes that much of attention or energy to allow someone to feel heard or, and therefore like felt feel special. Like, I feel like everyone's mom has their story of how they met this one like famous person and they were like really nice to them. And they're like, I'll always watch his movie or something. Yeah. <laughs> but just allowing everyone to feel heard and listened to. And I feel like even in business, if someone feels heard and listened to in, let's say like a business transaction, like you're at Trader Joe's and you're trying to buy something. Like I talked to a guy about football, then he got traded, like he got sent to a different Trader Joe's and he was like, hey, how's it going? Like, how did, how did your football game go? I'm like, oh, pretty good. And I probably spent 15 seconds with him, but it was just that interaction that allowed him to remember me. And I feel like that'll get you leaps and bounds in business as well. Like I agree. with Chris Voss, he talks about how everyone's going to remember how you were a D bag in that negotiation. And so everyone's going to treat you that way going forward. But if you allow someone to feel heard and listened to, they're always going to approach it almost from your side in a sense like, this is my friend, this, I've had this partner, I've had this business. I would like to continue that. And so 
that's what I would like. I don't know how good I'm at, at it, but I would want everyone to feel heard and listened to when they're interacting with me. Love it. I like that. Well, well thanks guys for being on the show. Oh. How can we connect with you? <sighs> LinkedIn is a great way. Um, YouTube, we're on the shed show it used to be the shed show with Cole Bolton, but now it's just the shed show. It's the shed show podcast. <laughs> yep. And then, yeah, mostly just on LinkedIn. So Cole Bolton, Benji Massey, uh, that's where we love to connect and where we really feel like our, our network is more, it's like a more authentic way to reach out to us. So if you want to reach out to us to be on, be on our podcast, if you ever want to, or just reach out to us and just ask how life is, that's the place to go. Take them up on it, guys. Thanks for another good episode. Thank you.